uh, showing you uh, artistic interpretation of a map of the city of Pittsburgh. And you can tell it's Pittsburgh because of the three rivers. And fun fact that I kind of wanted to share is uh, Pittsburgh is also known as the city of bridges because there's over 400 bridges in the city limits. And uh, some of you who listen to words from Pittsburgh is not as you can So a little bit of background uh, I'm talking about this. Uh, I'm originally from Western Pennsylvania and I identify as a user. Uh, I haven't lived there for probably about 10 years, but it still is pretty much who I am at my core. Um, so, I went to college in southwestern Pennsylvania, and after college, I wasn't able to get a job in the area, so I ended up moving out of state. And whenever I moved out of state, I realized um, some words and phrases that I said, um, people didn't quite understand what I meant. Uh, so that's kind of where I got the inspiration for this. And uh, Pittsburgh language is called Pittsburgh East, so it's just kind of like specific words and phrases. So um, I just decided to build an Alexa skill. Um, basically, you say something in English, and then if you say like a keyword or phrase, it'll swap out you know, English English with the Pittsburgh East version, and then Alexa will read the Pittsburgh East version of the sentence. If it exists, um, otherwise I'm just bringing back the English version. So um, I'm going to do a demo here. So the skills called hey, Yins. Uh, Yins is is for you. So hey, you guys. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be fun to see how this really sounds like. Um, so bear with me. Uh, Alexa, open the Yins. Welcome to Yin-Yins. To translate a phrase, you can say translate in the phrase you would like to hear in Pittsburgh East. After I reply, you can say repeat and I will repeat the translation. You can also say slow down if you want to hear the translation again slower. What would you like to translate? Translate, you should clean up the room because I can't find the remote control. Yin's should read up the room because I can't find the clicker. <laughs> Translate to people who don't use their turn signals are jerks. People who do not use blinkers are jack offs. <laughs> uh, slow down. People who do not use blinkers are jack offs. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to hear? Yeah. Catch you next time. Bye. <laughs> So 
So I'm going to start at like the front end part and move to the back end. So the front end part is called the seal interface. Um, this is basically just the interface that will process the user's words to trigger something called an intent. And an intent is pretty much just a fancy term for like an event object, for those of you all that are familiar with that. Um, so the back end then object gets sent to the skill service or the back end. The seal service has to be able to tell us that's not this one. But uh, let's go back to the front end part. Um, they call it the skill interface part model. So this is kind of an abbreviated version of what my model looks like for the um, It's JSON, so pretty standard. And the main section of the file is that way of intents in the names and samples. So you'll notice that some of those intent names start with capital Amazon. And the reason for that is because these are intents that are uh, pre-built and pre-configured by Amazon. So it's basically just plug and play. You just put it in there and we already have a list of you know, words and phrases that are true that intent. So if you look, maybe about two-thirds of the way down, you'll see the name of the intent. Um, the reason why that doesn't have capital Amazon in front of it is because it's a custom intent that I created myself. And because it's not ready to go out of the box, um, I did have to add in uh, different sample words that would trigger that intent. So you can kind of see how storyboarding can be helpful with getting this. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can add to it. So then once that intent's triggered, uh, that embedded object gets into the back end or the skill server. So here's an abbreviated version of what my school service for me looks like. Um, I set mine up as an AWS Lambda function, so that Lambda part is at the top, but the main portion of it is the handlers that get fed in. So handlers are basically just an object with a bunch of different functions, and each function matches with an intent on the front end, and then there's like catch-all at the end, kind of like a four or four page of you know, two front end. But if you look at the uh, main menu function in the campus objects, it's about maybe two thirds of the way down where all that green text is. Um, you'll see that it's admitting a reply. And in that reply, it's got two arguments. Uh, the first argument in this case is ask. Uh, ask is good if you want Alexa to see something and then wait for a reply. So this was kind of the beginning whenever she said, uh, like, welcome to Aliens. Here's the instructions, and then she's waiting for a reply. So that's why you should ask. Another option you can put in there is tell. Um, tell is good if you wanted to just say something and then just terminate the skill. So, like at the end, she's like, catch you next time. Bye. That's a tell. But anyway, then the second argument is what you want her to say. So that can be um, string, it can be string with variables in it. And it can also include something called SSML. Um, I had never heard of SSML before, but it's a uh, standard markup language that's used mostly for generation of synthetic speech. And Alexa SDK uses a subset of that spec. And it's really well documented. Um, I used SSML for adding like, extra breaks and pauses. You can do it to change you know, pitch for voice. I uh, used it for the slowdown. There's a lot of other things too, though, that I haven't played with yet. Question. Yeah. What about the other punctuation does, like the quotation marks, for example, or like the exclamation point? Does that change much? Oh, yeah, it does change the inflection. Uh, the question was for people that can't hear uh, does different punctuation change how she talks? And yeah, it does. Cool. So yeah, so the skill interface and then the skill service are tied together um, through the developer portal, and that's the URL for it. Um, anyone can sign up to be a developer there for free. And the developer portal has a pretty nice user interface where you can add in your um, all your skill interface, your front end models. You can add a URL to your skill service, the back end. Um, in my case, it was just a link to an AWS function. Uh, Lambda, 
But if you don't want to use Lambda, you can also do an HTTPS web service. And Amazon has like this really long list of rules for it to work. So that's kind of why I chose the Lambda, but you know, that if you want to do it. And then you can also publish your skills to it whenever you want to as well. So my skills live, um, the one that I demoed is actually not live yet, but it will be. So here's another really cool tool that I use. This is optional, you don't have to use it, but it's a really nice command line interface tool that's developed and maintained by Amazon. Um, so it's kind of a nice quick way to deploy a test. Uh, you can also publish your skill using it. And then finally, uh, Amazon also offers developer perks. Um, basically, all you have to do is go to this kind of long URL and fill out a pretty quick basic form. And then if you get your skill published to the skill store within that month, they'll send you something for free. Um, so in my case, I got a hoodie. It's usually like a t-shirt or a hoodie. Um, you can also get AWS credits. And then also the month that I published Takens, they were doing a special where if you get 100 unique users in the first 30 days, you get a free echo dot. So I did end up getting that, which was pretty cool. But anyway, uh, thanks for listening, both of you. Enjoyed the talk. And <laughs>